Sony cameras are known as being excellent in low light, and yes, even though it is not known as one, the a7R5 is no exception to this. But one of the key reasons this remains true is the camera's included dual ISO circuit that allows it to capture clean, nearly noise-free images at both a low or base ISO and a high ISO value as well. So in this video, we're going to discuss the dual ISO system within the a7R5, how this works and how you can find what these ISO values are, and also a couple of key tricks you may want to keep in mind as well. So the first thing we're going to want to do is determine how to find the low or base ISO. And this is going to vary slightly depending on the picture profile that you're using. For instance, here in video mode, we are currently on the s Cinetone picture profile, also known as PP11, and in this case, when we go down to find the base ISO, s base ISO is going to be essentially the lowest ISO value that the camera will allow us to select, which is 125. Because, of course, if we attempt to choose anything lower than 125, what you're going to see is the camera simply won't allow it, at least in this picture profile. However, it is not always going to be just the lowest ISO value that you can pick in a respective picture profile. If we were to instead switch things over to PP8, also known as the S-Log3 and S-Gamma3.Cine default picture profile in Sony's cameras. What we're going to see here is when we look at the ISO values and start to move down, that we do have additional ISO values with top and bottom lines under it that it will allow us to select if we want to. These ISOs with lines above and below them are actually extended ISO values in the picture profile, and so the key to finding the base ISO here is to select the first ISO we can find that does not have these top and bottom lines under it. And so therefore, with S-Log3, that ISO value is going to be 800. Now, of course, because the a7R5 is a stills-oriented camera, and I'd be remiss in not talking about what this looks like in its main photo mode. In this case, if we were to choose PP off or also PP2, which both are going to be the stills gamma in the case of being in photo mode, what you're going to find here is as we go through the different ISO values, the base ISO here is also, much like S-Log3, going to allow us to select values below the technical base ISO. So even though we could select a lower number here, the base ISO of this picture profile for taking photos is going to be 100. So yes, whether 125 for S-Cinetone, 800 for S-Log3, or 100 for PP off, or the stills gamma in photo mode, we have determined what our base ISO is in some of the more common and popular picture profiles in the a7R5. But from here, how do we determine what the high ISO value is to figure out that dual ISO system? In truth, there are actually a couple of different ways that we can determine this. So the first method is going to be what I call the times 3 plus method, which is to basically say, take that base ISO, multiply it by 3, and whatever that value is, find the next ISO that actually exists in the camera up from that value, and that is your high ISO. So just to provide a specific example of this with s earlier we determined our base ISO is 125, as you can see here. 125 times 3 is 375, and while no 375 ISO value technically exists, we will see that the next value up from that in the camera is 400. And yes, in fact, 400 is the high ISO value for s Now similarly, if we were to switch the camera into PP8 or S-Log3, as we noted before here, the base ISO is in fact 800. 800 times 3 is 2400. And yes, much like before, although no ISO of 2400 exists in camera, the next one up from that will be 2500, which is the high ISO value for S-Log3. However, this isn't the only way of being able to find this value, because there is also what I call just the count 5 method, which is to basically say that Sony cameras increment ISO by default in one third stops. And because this is a 1.7 stop difference, you can basically increment your ISO wheel or value five times up, and you will find that high ISO value for the picture profile. So still being an S-Log3 to use this as an example, with 800 as our base ISO, if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we are now at the high ISO value of 2500. Now switching this back into s to try the count 5 method, our base ISO here is 125, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that gets us to the high ISO value of 400, as we determined before. And yes, because the a7R5 is a photo-oriented camera, just to prove that these points still work when talking about the photo mode and PP off or the stills gamma, again, as we discussed before, the base ISO for this profile is going to be 100. 100 times 3 is 300. And yes, while no 300 value ISO exists in this camera, what you're going to see is the next value up from that to confirm with our times 3 plus method is 320. And yes, if we were to just count 5 to do the same exact thing, starting from 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we have found our high ISO value for the stills or PP off gamma in photo mode. So yes, whether you're trying to find the base and high ISO for a video-oriented picture profile like s or S-Log3, or you're trying to do the same thing in photo mode for the stills or PP off gamma in that setting, you will find that the process remains consistent across each of these picture profiles within the a7R5. But practically speaking, I think you should keep two key points in mind. 
The first of these being that, in fact, yes, you can certainly shoot well above both the base and the high ISO in this camera, depending on the circumstances. Yes, whether shooting photos or video in the a7R5, I managed to get clean shots at a range of different ISO values that were either above or just different from the base or high ISO. I have certainly taken photographs with PP off in the stills gamma and video in s Cinetone where I have been into the high hundreds and actually low thousands of ISO range, still getting clean shots, not needing to apply any noise reduction on them whatsoever. And truthfully, this is just a matter of knowing your camera, how to expose a shot properly, and how to get at least a decent amount of light on your subject. If there are picture profiles where it's more important to keep this in mind, it would certainly be for profiles like PP8 and S-Log3 or any of the HLG profiles where you're dealing with a flatter image with an adjusted noise floor that just tends to show and expose noise a bit more prominently than where it is already sort of baked in and solved for you in an in-camera color picture profile. That said, and now as you're seeing on screen, you can also get several clean shots even in S-Log3 outside of the base and high ISO values. Again, just keeping in mind the aforementioned points of making sure you're exposing shots correctly. Truthfully, depending on the circumstance, I would be okay with probably shooting this camera up until around the 12,800 ISO mark, where, of course, if I'm probably pushing that or somewhere close to it, I need to think about other ways to let light into my shot. The second point to keep in mind is that while these ISO values are actually true for the a7R5, believe it or not, there are many other Sony cameras that these same values and the same rule and system also applies for. So yes, this same dual ISO system and these same rules that we discussed here also apply, in fact, for the Sony a6700, for the Sony FX30, and well, yes, of course, there is now the Sony a7CR, and so you could expect that applies there as well. So if you're using any one of these other cameras, the same parameters we discussed here for finding the base or low ISO, and how to find the high ISO with either the times three plus or count five method will also work in these cameras. So yes, that is how the dual ISO system in the Sony a7R5 works. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have a number of different videos on the a7R5 already on the channel that I would definitely encourage you to check out. And I also have videos on the a7S III and a7IV's dual ISO system that I will leave a link to above and in the description below. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.